The Cascading X-Rail Slide Kit can be used with either a motor or a servo. Today I'm going to talk about how to mount a servo onto the slide kit and why you might choose a servo over a motor. Uh, this is the Hitech HS785HB servo. Uh, it's a multi-turn servo, so it's a one-of-a-kind. Uh, very few servos will rotate that far, uh, which makes this perfect for a winch setup. The 785 actually comes with a winch and the box. So all you have to do is attach the winch to the servo and you're ready to wind your string up. Now, the, uh, the nice thing about using a servo is you can just simply send a PWM signal and make it go to a specific location. Um, the, the position is absolute, which means uh, no matter where you shut it off, uh, as long as you turn it back on and send the same PWM signal, it's going to go to that same location. Uh, you're able to adjust your overall throw by adjusting the PWM signal. So say you're not getting all the way out to the end, just to increase that PWM signal a little bit and wind in a little more string. Um, for the inboard, kind of the same way. If it doesn't go all the way in, just decrease that signal until you reach the end point. The 785 servo is fastened to a quarter scale servo mount with 632 by 516 pan head screws. Uh, you can either use pan head screws on that in order to get some more surface area down onto the plastic tabs of the 785 servo, or you can use socket head screws if you prefer, uh, but I would recommend running washers in between the head and the, the plastic tab of the servo in order to increase the surface area. Um, when you have the servo attached, uh, it gets fastened uh, using a dual side bracket and the dual side bracket fastens to a surface mount adapter which is then attached to the X-Rail using single slide nuts. In this setup I've got the 785 at the very far end of the X-Rail in order to minimize the angle of the string as it approaches the first V-bearing. Now if this happens to interfere with your chassis, if you have a cross brace going across where the 785 might be currently, you can easily slide this down the X-Rail in any position um, along that first X-Rail. As far as rigging the string in order to make this fully functional, you'll need to modify the 785 pulley just ever so slightly. Uh, the holes in the pulley, and there are two uh, since it's a dual spool, uh, but in this setup you'll only use one side of that spool. Those holes are a little undersized, um, so you'll want to get a bit and just drill it out ever so slightly uh, to make it easier to pass that string through the hole and tie a knot. When you tie a knot, you want the knot to be in the inside of the pulley, and I usually make a, a fairly large knot, um, maybe wrap it three times, so that it doesn't pull back through that hole and it's nice and solid. Um, now you can see the string just kind of goes back and forth in between the V bearings until you reach the very end. Now on the very end there's a number of ways that you can uh, rig it and it, it will work perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to show you the way that I prefer. Now um, in order to keep the string parallel as it goes down uh, I tend to use the very top hole, the one nearest the last V bearing and you can run the string fairly easily through that hole um, and then I leave the last plate loose so that you can uh, go catty corner across actually to one of the holes on the 770 pattern and one of those holes has a slot so if you have the screw out um, you can easily run the string through and then pull the string up to the very top of the slot and then uh, tighten all your screws and that way it's, it's held in there fairly nicely and it will allow you to very accurately um, tie a knot in the position that you want. In order to tie that knot, uh, one way you can do it is to pull out your cascading slide kit a little bit and you can see that it's going to give you a little string. Um, and then when you slide it back, you'll see exactly where that needs to be. Now. When I slide it back, I'll take a Sharpie, make a mark on the string uh, where that knot should be located, and then you can pull it out, tie your knot, slide everything back in, and you should be about right. Um, the first time you turn this on, uh, you really won't know where your 785 servo is, so I'd recommend taking the screw out several turns and then popping the, the pulley off 
so that it's not engaged with the servo spline. And then um, you want to send your minimum PWM signal that you want to use. Uh, so let's say we start at 600 uh, microseconds. Uh, when you send 600 microseconds, it's going to rotate counterclockwise until it reaches that point. And then you can put your pulley uh, to where the, the knot is closest to the first X-rail. So it's ready to start winding uh, as you increase that PWM signal. Um, now, as you increase the PWM signal, you don't want to go too far. So um, as it reaches or as it nears the very end, increase very slowly until you get to the position that you want. And then remember that number, write it down or program it, and you're ready to go.